Hey saddle hunters, I've got a review coming to you that I've been working on for quite a long time. I wanted to give this saddle a number of hunts and put it through its paces so that I could speak to it accurately. I know there's a lot of buzz about it and people have a lot of questions and so I feel like now I can give you a good informed opinion about the Latitude Method saddle. This is a two panel saddle, what they call a modern take on the two panel saddle. So I'm going to take it, put it on the table here, zoom in on it so you guys can see it. We're going to walk through a bunch of its features and then I'm going to show you how I wear it, give you some of my thoughts on it and take it out into the tree and kind of point out some, some helpful tips to you as you're looking at it and trying to figure out how to use it. So let's jump in here. Okay, so I've got the saddle laid out here. I'm just gonna point out to you a little bit about its features and its design and construction. You can see this panel, this saddle has two panels. This is the panel that you sit on and then there's a panel that rides kind of more up into your lower back. Both panels are built with webbing on the top and the bottom. And then this is a feature that's unique to Latitude. They have vertical support webbing. And what that does is it keeps the, pieces from crunching up underneath you. So you don't got to worry about the saddle riding up. And let me tell you, they do a really, really good job at keeping the saddle fabric open. So that's nice. The design of it is just excellent. This saddle is made in America right here in Michigan. Uh, I believe they are located in West Michigan. And I think the saddle is sewn at a manufacturer in East Michigan. But just excellently done. You know, there's a few loose ends here and there, but nothing, nothing crazy bad. Overall, I would say that the stitching quality is really, really good. It, the mesh has a really nice uh, camo pattern to it. I've, I've never seen that in a saddle before, and it looks, it just looks really, really sharp. You guys can get a good look at that. And their close course, their logo right there in the middle is done well. The Saddle has two rows of molly webbing and they're a good design. They are, are loose enough that you can get something in there, but they're not open. You know, you can see that I stick my finger through there and it, and it pops open, but they ride generally pretty flat. So I found that they work really, really good. They're not super tight. The lineman belt loops are wide and, and they stay open well. They're reinforced. They, they just work good. I like the way that they're, they're oriented. They kind of ride below your hip bone, and I'll show you a little bit about that when I get it on, but right now I just want to give you an overview. So that's the bottom panel. Off the bottom panel, you can see there's a little loop here for the removable leg straps, and I love this feature. I, I tend to not like leg straps a whole lot, so to have the ability, and I don't think Latitude recommends this, but to have the ability to just open up that little G-hook and pop those off of there is super, super nice. So these G-hooks are, are metal with a little retaining clip on the end of them and they, they go on nice and easy and come off just as easy. The bottom panel has, has sewn in loops on the back side that clip into Kydex clips that come attached to the top panel. And for wearing it, you literally just slide those on there and they hang and it keeps it in really, really good uh, positioning. It doesn't sag. That's a problem with some of the other two panel saddles on the market. That's an excellent design. It comes on easy and quick. I've not even found it hard to do in the dark. Some people have had problems with these clips uh, popping off. You can see they, they have a little curl under there uh, I have not. Mine have stayed put and I, I've got a lot of hunts in this saddle. Some guys I, I think are putting a little bead of epoxy right there just to keep it closed and make sure it doesn't pop off. They sell replacements. I think they're 10 bucks for two of them on their website. Let me just open it up here so you can see the top panel compared to the bottom panel. You see there another method logo. The top panel is obviously a little bit thinner than the bottom panel. Maybe two inches or so. Hopefully you guys can see that all right. A uh, little bit more fabric on the bottom, but not, not a major difference. Let me flip it around and I'll show you the front of this saddle. This saddle is unique in that Latitude designed it so that it has a removable waist belt. 
you can see here's the top panel and they've got this reinforced webbing and this is really stiff guys i mean you can see me squeezing on that and that takes a lot to even get it to buckle so that's nice it helps it maintain its shape but between that and the mesh runs whatever belt attachment you have gone with and they offer two options this is the rope belt attachment method they also have a more traditional webbing style belt with an austria alpin buckle and, and a d-ring loop which is really nice some of the guys that are doing the cane climbing method or single sticking are liking that belt option but this works really really well i'll talk a little bit more about that once i put it on you can see the lineman belt loops are formed by the webbing from the top coming up to the webbing on the bottom and then they uh, they have a piece of rope inside of them and a reinforcement kind of sheath of webbing on the outside so they're they're pretty stiff they they work good and the lineman loops come come right up front right on the point of your hip uh, I like the way they're they're oriented uh, they just they're clean streamlined the bridge is a 36 inch from knot to knot Oplux bridge and they also used Oplux on this waist belt. But the, the bridge is attached with what looks to be a, a continuous loop of some type on both sides of, of the saddle. Same attachment method on both sides, stopper knots on the Oplux. And so what this allows you to do, you kind of got to work it to get it loose because it's pretty tight, but then you can just slide it and adjust the length of the bridge and you can do that from either side you can also work it loose here and adjust that up and down on the bridge loop so that's really nice because that allows you to adjust the pressure uh, kind of on your on your body whether you want the pressure evenly balanced or more on the top or more on the bottom and let me tell you what in this saddle in particular, I've found it's important to play around with that adjustment until you get it just, just right. In my opinion, I had to play with it a lot. I, I found out I like running it up near the top for my style of hunting. So the bridge is really, really nice. It's quiet. This whole saddle is super quiet. You know, the only metal on it is from these G-hooks, and they're never going to bang into each other. You can see where they attach right here on the top saddle. If you want to remove them, they once again just open up and pop out. So that's that's pretty simple. I've found that if you want to leave the leg straps attached, you can actually step through them pretty easily to put the saddle on. So that's an overview of kind of the saddle and its build. The construction is really, really good, guys. You can see how clean it is. Let me show you how I put it on and wear it, and then I'll take it outside and kind of walk you through my thoughts of it. Okay, guys, so I'm going to kind of zoom in here as best I can to show you how I can put the saddle on without undoing the leg straps. So here you go. I basically just hold the saddle. I've got it overlaid like, like it should be. I basically kind of just point it down and angle it forward, and you can see those leg straps just kind of hang open like that. So then I can simply just step step through it without taking the leg loops off at all. I pull it up and the waist belt for the rope is really easy. They've got this knot right here. I don't know what kind of friction hitch it is, but that's all it is. You can see the tag loops out the end here. This slides freely inside that channel in the saddle. So you can adjust it if you want it on your left hip or your right hip or right in the middle. Very easy to maneuver it around. So to tighten it down, all you do is grab the tag end of the rope, put your hand on this sliding knot, and you pull it tight. And I pull it right above my normal belt line. And let me tell you what, guys, this thing cinches down super, super tight. You can see that. I mean, I'm pulling on it. It just doesn't go anywhere. It's fantastic. I mean, it's just, it works so good. Better than I ever would have imagined. I, I think it gets tighter than any actual buckle I've ever worn. So the way I've been managing the tag end of this then is just coming over on the side like if I were walking in and I tuck it down between the two panels. And that keeps it out of my way, nice and streamlined. So then to walk in, I did two and a half miles in this the other day worked out great. Nothing moved on me at all. I take the saddle and I pull it 
pretty close to the end. Uh, you know, within an inch or two, I don't like to butt it up against the knot because I like to have a little bit to pull on, but pull it there, and then I take the other end and just pull it as tight as I can get it. So I pull, 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 pull until those two bridge loops tuck in against my body nice and tight. I take the tail end of this and I run it back through those two bridge loops. One, two, and then I tuck it behind the waist belt rope. And that keeps it in place. So you can see just how flat and how streamlined this saddle is. And it stays in place wears super nice because it's the the thing is high you don't get any sagging down on it just carries really really well i mean this may be the best wearing in saddle that i've i've ever used i'm extremely impressed in it so let me just also point out to you there's options for where you put your pouch you know you can put your pouch on the top or you can put your pouch on on the bottom i have been wearing putting my pouch on the top panel right here so it kind of drapes over both panels but it's attached to the top panel which is the higher panel all you got to do when you get to the tree to deploy the saddle is basically lift up so it comes out of those two clips and drop it down and then it's it's underneath your butt. You might even consider wearing it like that when you start to climb the tree. So let me take it outside. I'm going to put a pouch on it so you guys can see how it wears and we'll give you some thoughts in the tree. All right, everyone. So I'm, I'm here clipped into the, the tether. Wanted to give you guys a couple tips about how I run this saddle. I have found to run the bridge in about a 30, you know, probably a 20 to 22 inch range is good for me. It's right where I like it. I do that by taking two inches off of this end and then I just stick my hand wide like that, which is about 10 inches and I measure that from the prussic down to the knot. So I know I'm in about the same spot every single time I hook up the bridge. So that's a nice way to do it. I've just hooked up the tether and I wanna show you guys how I would deploy the saddle and begin to hunt. So. I'm standing on the tree. I don't have my lineman's belt around this tree right now just because this thing's, this thing's a monster. But I have found that for this saddle in particular, I need to run the tether a little bit lower than what I normally would. I, I typically have right around forehead height. This saddle for me runs well chin height to the nose. Somewhere in there is, is right where I need it. So you can see I'm about chin height as I'm standing straight up on my platform. I've got the uh, saddle on. First thing I would do is just lift up on the bottom panel and deploy it. Before I do that, I'm just gonna turn around and you can see I've got my pouch hooked on to the what's gonna be the top panel so it does not come down with the bottom panel, which I like because it doesn't sag that way. So you just lift up, you drop the bottom panel and then you can begin to put weight in it. You wanna run the bottom panel so that the two main pieces of webbing run over your hip bone. So my hip bone's right there. You can feel the outside of it. You want one strap below that and one above it. You begin to put weight into it. Probably gonna to need to shorten the tether just a smidge. So, right between the two. Next thing I do, now that I've got weight into it, I go back and I loosen up the weight belt just a smidge. And with that rope bridge, it's super easy. I'm done. Then take my second panel into my lower, into my lower back. So this is typically how you want it. One between your bone there, and then the top panel, you want it above your iliac crest. So you can feel, let me just slide it up. Your iliac crest is that round bone at the top of your hip. You want that between the two panels. So one panel below it, one panel above it, and that's what reduces hip pinch. You don't have any of your major webbing pieces running over those joints or those bones. So I struggled, just to be honest with you, I struggled with this saddle probably the first half a dozen times I used it because I'm primarily a sitter and I was having a hard time getting comfortable sitting in this. I think it's built primarily with the leaner in mind, but the more I've played with it, what I have found 
is that if I run a low tether and I take these loops to about an inch away from the edge of the, basically the dark part of the bridge loop, if I set them about an inch back, I can sit with really, really good comfort. But the back support when I'm leaning is so good in this saddle that uh, primarily when I've been hunting from it, I've been leaning. And, and I don't have any qualms about that at all. I've had deer come right by me and look up and, and I think they just think that I'm a tree limb coming off the tree. So it's a very natural presentation. If I were to sit though, I really haven't changed a thing. I, I just bend my legs, come into the tree, you know, you can feel it though, if it's not gonna be in the right spot. So sitting, I think is just a lot more finicky in this saddle than it is in some others. And you just wanna make sure you get the straps in the right spot. So as I went to go lower down, I could feel the weight from this top strap begin pressure along my hips. So what I'm gonna do is just pull it up a little bit higher and makes it that made a world of difference guys so don't be afraid to make little adjustments with these panels as you sit in this saddle so right there i've got good back support i have no pressure on my hips right you know the bones right there and this is really good for sitting i i have found though that the best way to use this saddle you know if you're a guy that's probably 75 percent leaning 25 percent sitting you know maybe you lean for 45 minutes every hour and just sit for 15 to take a break this saddle is ideal for that if you're a guy who sits for 45 minutes and leans for 15 there is other saddles I, I think that are more comfortable for that style but for leaning this saddle is really really good one of the disadvantages I find though is because this second panel is is a little bit higher up your body just the, in the way that it naturally wants to ride your bridge loops are higher up and your your seems like you get a little bit steeper angle on the bridge which is why you want the lower tether height to try to flatten that out as much as you can if you were sitting primarily you might even bring the tether down closer to your shoulders and i bet that would be even more comfortable so that's just one of the downsides that i have found with this particular design you get a decent amount of stuff right up close to you here the other downside of that is that it kind of blocks access to your pockets you know if you're a guy who who has a kangaroo pocket on your jacket or you like a, a muff or something like that you can put the muff down here but you can't have it on your lower abdomen area there's just too much you know too many ropes and the loops and all that going on so that's something to keep in mind the other thing I'll point out is because this panel is, is so high on your body, it kind of locks your top and your bottom together. That I think gives some advantages and it gives some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages I found is that when you go to pivot for shots, you, you get a little bit decreased mobility, you know, behind you and, and such like that. There's, if you have a saddle that is totally contained to the lower half of your body you get a lot of flexibility up top where this one i found just a little bit more restricted the advantage of that though is that when you're in these strains positions let's say you're wanting to rotate 360 degrees around the tree to hide from the deer because you have this second panel you just feel so much more supported and it just feels less sketchy when you're when you're doing movements like that. So I put a couple of Mara steps on on this strap for my Predator platform, and I'm just going to show you guys. If I go to move all the way around the tree here, I mean you just get a ton of of support. I mean it just I don't feel unstable at all. I would feel very comfortable taking a shot like that and positioning for it. You know, same thing if I, I go around the other side. It's just, it's just really nice. You know, I, I feel like for 360 degree shooting, that is an advantage, despite the fact that you have a little bit decreased mobility. So I thought I'd point that out to you. Another thing that I think people should be aware of when they're using this saddle is uh, the fact that your, your bridge loops are super conveniently located. You know, they're right there on the point of your hips. This is a one size fits all saddle. And so for, for bigger guys, for me, they're right. I'm about a 32 inch waist. If you're a little bit bigger, you're a 36, 38, 40, they're gonna, they might be a little bit too far back 
And the molly loops, as you can see, even on me, are on the back half of my body. So accessing pouches is a little bit more work than some other saddles. But that's, that's not to say it's a disadvantage. You can, you can still reach them. It's just something I, I thought I wanted to point out to you. So for leaning though, this is far and away the most comfortable saddle I've ever sat in. It's just this extra support, in my opinion, is just way better than a back band. I, I don't think you can beat it. One of the other downsides I've noticed of, of this though is that it's a little bit harder to change clothes and, and to rearrange your jackets and stuff like that because they're they're kind of caught under this pressure point. You know, if you were to change out your jacket, basically what you would have to do, I think, is go into a sitting position and try to take this panel down as low as you could, wiggle both panels kind of underneath your butt, and and then you could take your top panel off. Um, you can do it, it's just a lot more movement than some other options that are on the market. I did try, guys, to take these two panels kind of like they are now, just gotta loosen up the top one a little bit, and, and sit in it as if it were, you know, a, kind of like the ESS or the, the Recon, where I overlaid those straps and more sat directly on the saddle like this. And, and you can do it, but I, I immediately can feel the pressure from the rope coming through here on my hips. And, and it just wasn't, it wasn't great. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. I, I don't think it's a great sitting option. If you want the saddle completely underneath your butt, this is not the one for you. This is clearly meant to be used with one saddle in your butt and the other one in your your lower back area and for that it works really really well but anyway i just wanted to point that out to you guys make you aware of some of the advantages some of the disadvantages of this once again i'd recommend about a 20 inch bridge i'd recommend tether no, nose to chin height somewhere in there no regardless of whether you're sitting or leaning maybe even lower if you're a sitter but other than that, guys, this is a great saddle. If you have any questions, leave them below. I forgot to mention when we were inside, this saddle is 25 ounces. So one pound, nine ounces. So on the whole, it's a very light saddle, super well made, American made. I don't think you guys can find many options that are better than this if you're a leaner. It's supremely comfortable, wears in great. Because it's two panels, it, you don't have all the fabric underneath your butt for the walk-in. That is something I really, really appreciate. So hope this review was helpful to you. If you guys would do me a favor and subscribe, like this video, we'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to get to the, the thousand subscriber mark and that would really help us out a lot. So hope you guys have had a good season and if you're still at it, good luck.